What's up, world hoppers, misborns, and Elantrians? We are back with another episode of Into the Cosmere. Finally, our episode series where we dive deep into Brandon Sanderson's interconnected series known as The Cosmere. We are your co-hosts, Spencer and Gabe, and we're joined by the one and only Bookborn, who is a massive fan of The Cosmere and wanted to join us for what we're discussing today, Warbreaker. So how this works is we will be spoiling everything that we've read in the timeline prior to Warbreaker, sort of, (laughs) with very mild world-building spoilers for the greater Cosmere. Uh, We won't spoil any major story beats from like Stormlight or the final two secret projects since we haven't read those yet, but the books that are fair game so far are Elantris, both the Mistborn eras including uh, Secret History, and Tress of the Emerald Sea, which I know doesn't quite make sense with the timeline, but that's what we've read so far. Uh, With that being said, feel free to reach out to us on Twitter or Discord if you would like to talk about uh, anything Cosmere related or anything fantasy related. We always love chatting with you guys, or you can just leave a comment on the YouTube video if you're watching there. Uh, You can also support us on Patreon if you want to, where you can get a ton of extra content. If you support us at like the minimum tier, you get episodes of Gabe and I just kind of hanging out and going off topic and talking about whatever, like video games, movies, we play games, all sorts of stuff. Um, Or if you support us at the Mistborn tier, you get to see every episode we do as we record it and you get to see it like completely unedited, unfiltered so go check that out there if that's something that you're interested in and it helps support us a lot pay for it helps us pay for the uh you know like the different editing services and the things that you use as a content creator so we appreciate all our patrons over there uh and then lastly remember that we have a bingo card for 2024 and if you fill out this bingo card using our episodes from 2024 uh there's a video that kind of explains it. It's down in the description, or maybe I'll link it up here in the annotations. Uh, But if you fill out that bingo card, you get bingo, we will buy you a free trilogy of your choosing. So links are down in in the description for the bingo card and kind of the instructions on how all that works. We have a separate video for it. So go check that out. We would love to, uh, We'd love to buy you guys a trilogy if you're watching our uh, watching our episodes. So, um, and then lastly, the thing I'll say before we uh, before we get rolling here is we are pretty much going straight into spoilers. Usually, we'll do like you know what we've been reading or whatever. But Gabe and I haven't really been reading anything other than Warbreaker since our last yeah. episode. So we'll pretty much be going straight in. So if you have not read Warbreaker and don't want certain parts of the Cosmere spoiled for you, this is your last warning. <laughs> All right. So we are here with Bookborn. What's up? Hey, you were, how are you guys? You were good. Good. You were here last time for a creator's corner where we talked a lot about the Titanic. That's what I was going to yeah. say. The only thing I remember from that is the Titanic. Yep. <laughs> the Titanic rant. Oh, God. That was that was so much fun. That was, that was awesome. It. Oh, you, you haven't have watched it? it back? I you guys were going to lie. Oh, God. Watch it. Man, I I went over to to Gabe's house for Christmas this last year, and I was like, we're going to watch Titanic when I'm there. And then, like, the holidays just get so, like, you you know, you're doing so many things, and it's like, okay, do we want to sit down for, like, a three-hour movie? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But I still, I want Gabe to watch it so bad, because I just, I want him to feel the pain that I feel. Um, (laughs) So... (laughs) But um, my question for you, Bookborn, is what what is it about the Cosmere that you love, and how did you get into it? Like, I know I know that the the Cosmere is kind of your thing that you're really into. So I would love to know more about your connection with it. Yeah. Um. So I actually my first Brandon Sanderson novel was Wheel of Time. Um, okay. I I did come in through the Wheel of Time uh, doorway. Um. I finished book 13 of the wheel of time i think two weeks before uh, memory of light came out 
Um, so whenever that was, I think 2012. That's that's the I think it was like 2012 ish. And okay. uh, my husband gave up on the Wheel of Time and um, he had a friend who was like, you should read this series Mistborn. So this was kind of happening concurrently, not realizing that these were like the same people mm. <laughs> necessarily. Right. Um, and he finished Mistborn and was like, you have to read this. It's incredible. Um, and I was like, oh, I that's Brandon Sanderson. Like I just read Wheel of Time. So um, I read Mistborn like in 2012 and then just slowly made my way through all of his works that were out at the time, um, actually behind Zach and kind of never stopped, just kind of became immediately obsessed. I think, um, so let's see, I think I did Mistborn and then Elantris and then either, there was only two Stormlight books out at the time. I might've read Warbreaker oh, okay. actually. Because the funniest thing is I'm I'm known, Warbreaker is my favorite Sanderson. That is my hot take. I'm known for that hot take. Um, but when I first read the back of this book, I thought it sounded like the stupidest book I'd ever heard. <laughs> like my husband had it and I was like, I'm not gonna read this. This is so stupid. But then I read Mistborn and Elantris and I might have read even like Way of Kings or something. You're like, well, I now I have to try it. And I was like, well, okay, at this point I'm gonna read everything and then, yeah. um, it's incredible. I love it. Yeah. I have both my versions here. So there's my other. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that one looks cool. Yeah, this is oh, the leather nice. bound. I nice. didn't know there was like a special edition for it. That's cool. He has a leather bound for most of, well, not all of them, but many of them. You know, Words of Radiance just went on sale on the Kickstarter. Okay. Recently. Sweet. And are these, are these leather bounds, can you just buy them or did you have to be there for the Kickstarter? Okay. So <laughs> this is getting too complicated that you guys probably don't care about. So any of the single book ones, so Warbreaker, like Elantris, Mistborn, you can just buy off the website. They do come in and out of like stock, stock quite yeah. frequently. Like they can be difficult to get now. They weren't necessarily at the time. Um, okay. Then Stormlight, he does a Kickstarter for because those have to be broken. You can see the ones with the two blue right there. Yep. Yeah. Those are my Way of Kings. Okay, my can't figure out my whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> and because he has to split those into two books, he does them through Kickstarter so you can get more for your money because they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Because, okay. um, again, this is too much information, but Tor isn't interested in doing leather bounds. And if he's going to publish a book outside of Tor, it can't compete. So they have mm. to be priced at $100 uh, or more per book. Gotcha. So okay. because the Stormlight ones are so expensive, he does them on Kickstarter. Yeah. So that he can give you like a ton of other s stuff. So the Words of Radiance one just came out um, in March was the Kickstarter. Okay. So yeah, anyway, more info okay. than you needed to know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, that's cool though. That's cool. I definitely, I, I want to see, I want to see how I feel about the Cosmere when I kind of get to you know, when I'm getting into Stormlight and stuff, because right now I I would say that I really enjoy the Cosmere. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm like a massive, like diehard fan of it so far. Like uh, Mistborn is by far probably my favorite. Um, aside so I think from... Stormlight usually is the series that gets you into the Cosmere. Like I okay. wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was into the Cosmere until I read Way of Kings and Words of Radiance. Yeah. Um, which was all that was out at the time. I feel like that's the series that gets people either into it or not. Mm -hmm. um, but I also maintain that you don't have to be into the Cosmere to enjoy Sanderson's works. Um, yeah. I'm, I just feel like it's become such a bigger th deal now than it, it was when I first started. Yeah. Um, it's much more at the forefront. Like, yeah. now people know going into reading his works. And before, like I said, like I had no idea. Right. Um, when I was reading, reading the books initially, yeah. Well, yeah. even even what we've read so far, like trying to think of connections to the Cosmere universe in general, was impossible. I couldn't, I couldn't catch anything that I've no, you know nothing was noticed. Um, well, until we got to like Tress, where it's like, oh, that's a Chandra, and like, like, oh, all these yeah, other. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's been yeah. a long time since I've read that. But, so your yeah. projects were definitely more in your face about it. I mean, Mistborn, like Era One, the only Cosmere stuff is you were really seeing Shard stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
that's really your introduction to shards preservation ruin uh harmony right um but other than that you know it's all details yeah yeah there's there's nothing that i can remember in mistborn where it kind of teases like a bigger like cosmic connection at least from like a first time read yeah like i'm sure i'm sure on like a second read or something i'd be like oh i see it but um because i i think that i've i'm i know gabe has read through mistborn twice i've Mm -hmm. read through it once um i've read i've actually read era two twice Mm -hmm. um and yeah, I, I really like... I, I think Era 2 gets too much hate. I really like it. <laughs> yeah, I also really like it. Yeah. People think Era 2 gets hate, but from what I've seen, um, it's a 50-50 split if you like Era 1 or Era 2 more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would say I would say I probably like Era 1. Well, ah, jeez. I don't know. They're so, <laughs> it's, it's tough. They're so different tough, because sure. Era, Era, 2, Era 2 is almost like a... Era 2 is almost like a Dresden Files book. Like, it's this fun, punchy, action, funny kind of book, uh, kind of series. And then Mistborn Era 1, um, not that it doesn't, like, have its funny moments or whatever, but it's more serious yeah, it's and, and, like, serious. darker and, like, just bigger scale and stuff like that. So. so since we're talking about Mistborn, I was kind of trying to figure out what we need to do, if anything before we go into Stormlight, because my whole idea so far has been we need to get to Warbreaker so that we can go to the Stormlight, which is the thing that I really want to read, and it's the thing that I think Gabe will really love. Because uh, I, I read the first... I read, like, the first quarter of Way of Kings, and I really, really loved it. Um, and so I'm like, is is there anything else? And I was thinking about Mistborn the other day, and... I'm like, man, I really want to do a Mistborn reread. Do we do that on the channel? Because the Mistborn video that we have is like, I think it's literally episode two or three <laughs> from when we started. And so I'm Probably like, do real we... raunchy. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. do we need to like revisit it and do like an updated video on that? Do, do you think we need a refresh on Mistborn before we go into Stormlight or can we go straight into it? You can go straight in because I'm the person who doesn't believe there's a reading order. I think you could start with Stormlight Archive. Okay. Like it just doesn't matter. Mm. Um, I just, I, I wouldn't. I, I would, I think reading Stormlight should be first before you reread anything. Um, okay. Like I didn't have all the Stormlight out, so I had reread Mistborn um, yeah, okay. before, you know, the other ones, but that's because nothing was out. I just, I don't think you need to. The only thing is I just make sure you don't end up skipping Emperor's Soul. Um, it's a really okay. good one. You don't need to read it in any way before Stormlight. Um, okay. But of all the things I wouldn't want you to miss, that would be the one. Um, it's really, really like good. A, and it's only a novella. It's like 150 pages. Oh, so it's like a standalone right. thing then. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that in Arcanum Un- Unbound? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, He he's got... I've been meaning to get this anthology on audible because i got it i had like a free credit on like audiobooks.com like that super janky audiobook (laughs) app and so i was like oh i need to read like secret history and stuff so i'll do it but that app is so awful they don't have like chapter there's not chapters at all it's just just like play and pause (laughs) yeah it's just play Play and pause and there's like there's like increments like hour increments and you can like go down by that but you can't pick yeah. like a specific story in all these short stories it made me so mad um so i yeah. need to do that don't um, read arcanum yeah. unbound that way <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah for sure um okay cool so i guess you know that that kind of answers that question um because i was i was worried there was going to be some stuff in way of kings that was like i need to remember the specific thing from mistborn or something once again i think um cosmere stuff is so secondary like, if you want to get into that because it's fun, great. But the story comes first. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and Brandon just isn't in the books right now. There's nothing in him that can't be understand like understood without okay. reading anything else. So it's, I, you know. I, I think for me, I would just hate to, like, miss something. Like, if I didn't know who Hoyd was and I read 
Warbreaker, I wouldn't have had this moment where I'm like, oh, that's Hoyd. But you're going to miss stuff. I didn't know who yeah. Hoyd was. And then I reread <laughs> later and it was fun. It was like, oh, there he is. Right. And I didn't know about him. Like, I think it's just the wrong attitude wrong to go to, and like, yeah. I'm going to miss something because yeah. you are right. like you are. And I think it's hard because people will watch my like Cosmere Connection videos and be like, how did you catch it all? It's like, yeah, I've been here for like 14 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's like, I'm in the dreads. Like, I'm in yeah. the weeds at this point. Like, I, it's, I've done the rereads. I've like been in it, but that's not how it was at all. Like, I had no idea who Hoyd was when I, right. I don't even think, I don't even know when I figured out who he was. You know, it wasn't until a reread that that was even a thing for yeah. me. So oh, I just, um, okay. I just don't think you need to worry about um, that sort of thing. Yeah, I feel no. like if you're like reading new books and like you're solely focused on just trying to catch these connections, you're gonna miss. Like, I don't know if I could focus on that and still absorb the story completely. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm just gonna read the story and enjoy the story, and then right. later I can learn about something. Oh, that's why that happened. Or and look, here's the thing: right. there is stuff you will a hundred percent recognize in Stormlight for like with what you have read, okay. and that will be fun. And there's gonna be stuff you will a hundred percent miss. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's also totally okay. And, um, you know, it's just, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Cool. Gotta believe me. Nice. Okay. That, that makes me feel better about going into, into storm. I'm, I'm really excited for stormlight. I know I said this earlier, but <laughs> I, I, I think that stormlight is going to be the series that gets Gabe and I both hooked on the Cosmere because from from what I've read of it so far I had such a good time it was so fast paced and just fun to to read about um and it just kind of gave me a taste of like what the greater series might look like I mean Stormlight's um, widely considered his best work it's my favorite series of all time um it's just it's very very good awesome nice. yeah. I'm super excited um so then I wanted to ask you, since you are so kind of ingrained in this like Cosmere community and stuff, what what is some of the Sanderson news? Like what's coming mm -hmm. up? What do people know about? Uh, do we have any information on like Era 3 like we see in Tress or anything like that? Mistborn Era 3, you mean? Well, isn't there, doesn't the Cosmere as a whole have eras? And um, Tress was yeah, kind of pointing so. to like, I mean, I guess the they next... usually just call it late stage Cosmere. I guess they do sometimes call it Eras. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Era 3, Mistborn. Um, I don't know if we have a release for that. He probably did talk about it in the state of the Sanderson, but I can't remember. Um, okay. We have Stormlight 5, obviously, is coming out in is that this uh, year? December. Yeah. Oh, okay. So oh, this cool. year um, at Dragonsteel. Um, that will be like, it's uh, the Stormlight 5 Dragon's Deal. And um, notably, that's like one of the last Cosmere books for a decade. Um, oh. People really freaked out about that. Um, Whoa. Um, when he did a State of Sanderson, he probably won't have Stormlight 6 out uh, for 10 years. Um, oh. which... Is that, so is it 10 years without Stormlight or 10 years without Cosmere? Well, it's complicated because we kind of <laughs> thought it was mostly 10 years without Cosmere. There was like one story, but then he just announced during the war break, I mean, not war breaker, uh, words of radiance, Kickstarter, a secret project number five. Mm. Okay. Um, and that is Cosmere. So my guess is we'll probably get little bits of Cosmere, but supposedly no main Cosmere books mm. um, for several years. So wow. how do you feel about that as like a Cosmere, you know, person? Like, does that you kind know, of freak you out a little bit or? Nope. Not at all? Uh, <laughs> everyone was freaking out and I was like, just didn't it affect me? Yeah. Um, hmm. I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, he's probably burnt out a little oh, bit of totally. writing Cosmere. Yeah. Now we can go kind of like do some other stuff. I also just don't believe him. I think, yeah. his, yeah. I just, I, I think his intention is that and I'm not denying yeah. that but I just feel like he's going to be on an airplane one day and be like well I wrote this thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah totally yeah 10 years That's is true. a long time yeah yeah um so anyway I don't know we'll, yeah. we'll see yep okay interesting yeah because with with how often he writes um and especially you know with the re reveal of the four secret novels he's like yeah i just like wrote these randomly and here they are I i'm sure 
there, there's got to be something, I'm something. sure. I'm um, sure. Speaking of which, you guys should try to read Stormlight in time for December's release. Yes, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking because okay. that would be that would be huge for the channel if we got to December and we were ready for book five, and then put out an episode on that. That would be that would be super yeah. super hype, and it would just be fun to be like hyped with the community and be like, yeah, we're here with everybody doing the Stormlight thing. Like that'd be fun. For sure. Yeah. Um. So then, what? Uh. You know, after after finishing Warbreaker um, and I actually pulled a Gabe today I oh I, what does that mean <laughs> it sounds <laughs> rude <laughs> yeah well no I, I don't even know what I he's finished, talking about so go ahead I, I finished I finished Warbreaker like less than an hour ago <laughs> oh okay <laughs> from the recording oh of this. yeah okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I cut the line close sometimes you know yeah <laughs> you haven't digested it I see yeah I mean I I think I think I have because because I've read it once before. Yeah, so that's this was a reread. I was gonna say like I didn't I yeah. forgot about it. Well, not I didn't forget about the book, but I just didn't realize that's what this was. And so I was reading, starting it, and I'm like, this sounds so familiar. And right. I was like, oh my god, I've read this whole book before. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so yeah, after after getting to the end, like an hour ago, I <laughs> I was like, there's got to be another Warbreaker book at some point because it or like maybe there's not I mean it's not like necessarily a cliffhanger ending but it is kind of like the Vena and Vasher kind of riding off into the sunset I'm like I want to see what happens next yeah uh, so is there any rumor of another Warbreaker book there is another Warbreaker book um I mean not out yeah um yeah. I actually, I don't know, whenever Shadows of Self came out, I was in living in San Francisco at the time and we went to um, Sanderson's like release signing. Um, and this was the question I actually asked him because I loved Warbreaker so much. I said, when are we getting a Warbreaker sequel? Mm -hmm. And he said, not soon. <laughs> 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 um, I forget, he said something like that. He was like, don't hold your breaths. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's not no. happening. No, it is, but it's one of the latest ones he's gonna write. Mm -hmm. um, so it is like very late stage Cosmere in terms of um, not necessarily timeline, but when he's gonna write it. Gotcha. Oh, um, okay. it it's one of the last books. Um, oh, really? So, and it's so gonna it'll be, be- It'll be a while. It'll yeah. be a while. And um, he, I remember I read this, I could not tell you because I read it so many years ago. I read it like in an interview or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, he said he was worried about the Warbreaker sequel because it will probably follow Vivenna. And mm -hmm. he was worried that people would be sad that it wasn't following Siri and Susabron. Oh, um, but he's okay. like, he feels that their story is done and and Vivenna's isn't. Um, and people okay. didn't really like Vivenna. So I think that was, you know, concerning. Um, huh. But as far as I know, the plan is still to have a second Warbreaker book. Uh, as, if it's a direct sequel or if it's much in the future, I don't... Um, you know, I don't know, but I think it would yeah. follow Vivenna. Okay, yeah, that that's interesting that people felt that way, or, or he thought people would feel that way because I, I, I felt happy with where we left Siri and uh, Susabron, um, but Vivenna and Vasher. I was like, I want to see what happens next. Yeah, with that's. Them. So I mean, that's, that's like the that's end. That's clearly of this the book. story thread. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. Um, as long as we just get like a maybe a little ch uh, check in on Siri and, and Susabron or like a little anecdote saying what happened to them, like that, that would be cool. But they're happy. They're gonna live yeah. happily ever after. Yeah. In yeah. Control of their army. Everything's gonna yeah. be fine. Well, with that being said, let's go into our our general thoughts on this book. We can talk about you know whatever. Like what what are what what are the vibes on this book? Uh, well, let's let's start with Gabe. Yeah, so I was gonna say I see on your the first thing on your general thoughts is not my favorite, but I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of surprised by that because I freaking love this book. Yes. Oh, cool! I thought it was yes. so so good, and I had so much fun this time reading it. Oh, I'm sweet. glad I'm glad that I had read it before because I think I was much more able to kind of understand the concepts and what was going on. But I I was like just thrilled with the entire thing it was awesome all the characters are incredible the whole story is awesome the gods everything is awesome 
Oh, that's cool. That yeah. makes me so happy. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad you liked it. That's that's sweet. Yeah, I I I think I, for me, so the the first time that I read it, I did the graphic audio. Is that what you did this time? No, no, I just read oh, okay. the regular. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think I did the graphic audio the first time, and I think that that added an extra layer of enjoyment because I I came away from my first reading of it being like, oh, this was awesome. I loved this so much. And then I read it through this time and I, I, I don't like hate it by any means. Yeah. Like I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it, but it just wasn't that high that I got the first time with it. Like it just, there was something that was missing and the narrator was good. Like everything was good. Um, but I think it took me on this read through, it took me a long time to get hooked into the characters and into the like pantheon of gods and just like the overarching story in general. And I think part of it might've been that I actually forgot a lot of the stuff that happened. And so I don't know why I'm like this, but when, when this happens to me, like I'm getting frustrated because I can't remember what like even knowing that I've read it before I can't yeah. remember like specific and so I was getting frustrated like oh, I wish I could remember like how this plays out um, so maybe like that was a part of it for me this time too but I think that by the time by the time we get Siri interacting with Light Song I think that's when it kind of starts picking up for me because pieces start you know, going into place and when uh, Vivenna is dealing with the mercenaries, not just like initially, but when that's like really rolling along, yeah. that's kind of when I started to, to get into it. Um, and then the end was fantastic. Like the last 15, 20% of the book, that was where it was really like, okay, this is great. I love yeah. this. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of my that was kind of my like general general feeling about it. I would say it, I, it might be interesting to go around the table here and and say, you know, out of like Mistborn, Warbreaker, and Elantris, uh, or like Tress, if we want to throw that in there, what's kind of your favorites? Like, where are you ranking these? Because I think I think I would probably put. If we're going by series, I think Warbreaker would be on the bottom, and then Elantris, Tress, and Mistborn. Um, but if we're going by books, I think my least favorite, like by far, my least favorite Sanderson book is Mistborn Era 1, Book 2. I Love Ascension. I hate <laughs> yeah. that book so much. I I don't know why that book exists. Um, but oh that would God. that would be <laughs> that would Jeez. be at the bottom, and then Warbreaker would be after that, and then like you know, kind of kind of going up the same kind of way. So, um, so yeah, what 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 do you guys think? Do you do you know what you would rank these necessarily? I don't know. I feel like I would need to refresh on sure the books to get a good accurate reading because as it sits right now. I would probably say like Mistborn Era One as a whole. I loved like a crap ton. It was freaking amazing. But like mm -hmm. as of right now, like this this one really took me. So I would nice. probably put it at the top. But again, it's been a long time since I've read any of those other books, so that could possibly change. Sure. But, yeah. Okay. I already Book said one. Warbreaker was my favorite, so yep. yeah, I've read them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, where would where would Mistborn rank? among like Elantris and I no, guess I did a whole Tress. ranking video and this is probably going to be different because I can't remember what I said oh, okay. you know a year ago um <laughs> have to I, go back I, and watch I, the video I, yeah, yeah go back and watch the video no um yeah. I did Warbreaker I know Words of Radiance was my second then I had Emperor's Soul as my third um and then maybe Way of Kings or something um so that's why it's hard to remember but then I probably had uh I know number three um Hero of Ages is my favorite Mistborn book. Yeah. So probably like Warbreaker, Hero of Ages, uh, Final Empire. Um, probably then Well of Ascension, then Elantris, um, and then all of Era 2 below everything else you've read. 
Oh, okay. Um, what have I missed something that else that you guys read? Is that uh, it? Tress. Oh, Tress. Tress. Oh, yeah, Tress is only... really high. Yeah. Tress is probably like after um, Hero of Ages. So it'd probably be oh, like okay. Warbreaker, Hero of Ages, Tress, Final nice. Emperor. Okay. Maybe Final Emperor and Tress are like tied or whatever. I loved Tress. Right. Yeah, Tress was yep. so good. Was I good. had so much fun with that book. So what do we think about the, you know, while we're in general thoughts, what do we think about the various character interactions? Were there any that were like a standout favorite for you guys? Like any, because I, I feel like there's several pairings throughout the book um, and maybe, you know, duplicates like Siri and this person and Siri and this person or Vivenna and this person and Vivenna and this person. Yeah. So is there, is there any that stand out to you? Yeah, I would I would say my two favorite are Vivenna and Vasher and Siri and the God King. Yeah. Yeah, Siri and the God King is great. I actually would put in um, Vivenna and Nightblood. Oh yes, um, oh, I quite oh, love Vivenna true. and yeah. Nightblood together. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Nightblood is one of my top characters in the Cosmere, so awesome. Um, That's awesome. I really love Nightblood. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot nice. of cool stuff happens with that sword. Yeah, for sure. I. Yes, so I would say by far my favorites are Vivenna and Vasher and Siri and the King. I'll talk about those in a second, but I loved the early Vivenna and the mercenaries dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> I was so pissed when they turned out to be bad guys because I yeah. loved, I loved that interaction so much. Where you just you have these mercenaries who are like we're not like other mercenaries or like people misunderstand us all the time. And like just this whole thing. And she's like slowly having to kind of accept like accept and believe that they're being honest with her. Yeah. That, that, and also like kind of humble herself a little bit because now she's doing all this covert work in the city and she's dealing with like unscrupulous people and like, we're like shady people and she's like and the mercenaries keep telling her like this is what you got to do if you want to start a revolution you have to deal with people that you may not necessarily want to deal with and then that kind of leads perfectly into her arc where like they betray her and she's like homeless on the streets and she's really having to learn about like humbling herself a whole lot and kind of coming out of that. And, and then even with Vasher and he's like, yeah, you're going to have to wear these trousers. I'm not going to buy you a pretty dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I loved, I, I guess just her like character arc through that, but I really did love the, the early stages of her hanging out with the mercenaries. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, Vivenna, I, I've i always maintained that Vivenna is one of Sanderson's um, most well-written characters because mm. she's just so obnoxious in the beginning of the book. Like, I remember the first time I read it, I was just like, I just dislike this woman yeah. so much. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and then she becomes homeless for a week and then you like have so much empathy for her and yeah. like what she has to go through. Like my opinion on her changed completely when she was humbled. And I think that's a, a cool thing to go through with a character to start um, with the dislike and then by going through their character arc with them. Um, you know, I, I quite like Vivenna by the end of the book. Yeah, um, right. And, and one of my favorite scenes in the entire book actually is when Vasher um, is first with Vivenna and he thinks that she is lying yes. about not knowing. And so he's trying to like get her to pick up Nightblood, right? Because that's his like litmus test. Yep. And she's right. like speaking because yeah. she really is like at heart a good person. She yep. just needs to be humbled. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. right. Um, yep. And it's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, that's great. Um, have you, you know, speaking of, uh, the mercenaries and stuff. Have you read the Lies of Locke Lamora and those books? No, no, you know, that has been, the Lies of Locke Lamora has literally been on my to read list since before I got on YouTube because my husband read it like a decade ago and loved it. <laughs> yeah. and you, know, you have those books where you're just like, always like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna read yep. it. Totally. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna totally. read it. And you just never read yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that is, like the fact that I have read A Song in Ice and Fire before I read Liza Locke Lamora yeah, is one of that's the craziest wild. things that's ever <laughs> happened to me. Like, but I, I am, I'm gonna read it, but I haven't. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it would be perfect for you because if you really enjoyed- um, Oh, I know I'm gonna love it. Yeah, yeah, there's lots Everyone's of like- Everyone's told me I'm gonna love yeah, it. It's, yeah. That's not the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just like, it's just, you know, it never happens. I don't yep. know why. 
Yeah, because I I feel like I feel like it's even better than than the first Law trilogy. And if you mm. if you liked the first Law trilogy and just how well written that was and how well narrated it is in the audiobook, um, you're gonna love. Yeah, you're. Well, I won't listen it. to the audiobook, but I will read it. Yeah. And I'll tell <laughs> oh, you okay. what, Spencer never never misses a chance to talk up the Liza Lachlamora. No one does. That book <laughs> has so many <laughs> fans. Like, yeah. I just can't tell you, like, every podcast there's a moment with a new guest where he's like, have you read the Liza Lachlamora? <laughs> Hello, sir. May I yeah. tell you about the Liza yeah. Lachlamora? Gonna... We all have both books. It's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, totally. I just like to give him crap. Uh, Gabe, Gabe reread them recently. I did. Just in the past so couple good. weeks, I Isn't think. Isn't there like a new one coming out? Aren't people really excited? Yeah. We're waiting. We're yeah, waiting. We're just waiting. Yeah. We're just waiting. Yeah. I just saw Murphy had a video on it. I saw her. Uh... Oh, does she have a new one? I don't know. This was on a few it? weeks ago. Oh, okay. It was about the Liza Locke Lamora, so I didn't click on it. I just saw oh, the okay. thing, <laughs> yeah. and it looked like there was a new Liza Locke Lamora book. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw I saw yeah. a thing somewhere where the next one, you know, I saw the next book, and then I clicked on it, and it took me to Goodreads, and there was like 30 reviews, and I was like, is it out right now? <laughs> and I texted Spencer, and I was like, dude, the next book is out. Like, why no. don't we have it? And he's like, no, that's not how this works. They're I'm like, you sweet summer child. Do you know how many reviews? How excited they are. <laughs> you know how many reviews Doors of Stone has? Yeah, <laughs> on like, on, like Goodreads. And I, I, I'm I'm just a simple. <laughs> sure, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a funny moment. I was like, oh, how do I break it to him? He's so excited. <laughs> oh, it's gonna I hurt. I did get very excited. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. So back to back to Warbreaker. What did we think of the difference between? like the country of Halandrin and uh, Idris. What, what did we think about? Because I feel like they're very they're very different from each other. What, what did we think about these two? I think I had a hard time with the, you know, that I guess that whole point, the differences in the war, wasn't something that I latched onto as much as the rest of the story. Like, I understand that was, the, you know, a big part of it, but I I think both have flaws, and I think both, could be wrong or right so i i guess was neutral you know hmm because it's just yeah. faith that's the whole that's the whole thing it's different beliefs and different thoughts yeah. on certain things yeah two two very different religion like their their beliefs their religious beliefs are like diametrically yeah. opposed yeah um and so and that's, i feel like that's, that's just such a crappy of... reason to go to war you know <laughs> so i was just yeah. i mean that's one of the main reasons anyone's gone to war. No, right? I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. What What do you think, Bookborn, about the just kind I'm of the with Gabe on this one? I have reread this book several times, and I wouldn't say I never. I've never really read with that as my like the yeah. forefront of my reading. But you're making mm. me think that maybe my next um, reread should be thinking Focused more about on that. that. Yeah. <laughs> well. So I guess, I guess what I mean by it is I just thought it was interesting how you have you have Idris, which is supposed to be like the good guys, right? And they're they're people. I mean, I, I we really don't know enough about Idris, but like I guess their people are happy and they're they're portrayed as the good guys, and their whole dynamic is very like stoic and like it talks about Vivenna like she grew up like keeping her hair black and like Siri was kind of the wild child yeah. just letting it do whatever and people like frowned on that and then we get over to um Halindran and it is this super bright vibrant city that is just so ostentatious but really behind it all there's like darker stuff happening in the in the castle with the pantheon of gods like they're all they're all being used to some extent it's kind of this big show and it's kind of darker underneath and then you get to the slums of Halandren and it's very you see how poorly these people yeah. are treated um, and so I just thought it was kind of interesting where like the good kingdom or like what is portrayed as the good kingdom isn't really like this flashy like 
heaven-like place but if you were to walk into Hallandren, it's like this beautiful like oh this is a party like this is so awesome but really there's like darker stuff happening underneath the surface and so i just kind of liked the I, I i liked the difference between the two of them like it wasn't it, you know, it was subtle. It wasn't like this super stark difference besides like these bright colors and stuff. But I think just through like the world building, um, there there was there was a a difference between them that I really appreciated. Hmm. Yeah, well okay. spoken. Mm -hmm. I also really enjoyed the political intricacies of this book. We get. Um, you know, we get a lot of stuff happening with like the priests and everything that Siri sees and how they're, you know, using the king and, and all of those kind of intricacies. But then when we go into the pantheon of gods and we see them uh, converse more and maneuver more, we, a lot of it through Blush Weaver, she's doing a lot of the political maneuverings. Yeah. And I really like this moment that was near the end of the book because I think it kind of. I think it kind of displayed what the whole idea is behind some of these gods where uh, at the end when they're trying to decide if they want to go to war or not, Light Song's there thinking, is it actually a good idea to go to war? Like, does it make sense to go to war with Idris? Is it the right thing to do? And Blush Weaver raises her green flag and Light Song's like watching her saying, he's watching her say basically like yes I'm going to put my half of the army up for this war and I'm going to be super involved with it and as she's walking down to you know the ceremony or whatever Light Song kind of remarks that now that she's done that she's going to be at the center of this thing like she has so much power because she has so much of the military and that's all this means to her like it that's the only thing is like she doesn't really care about like going to war with Idris in any way. She's like, she's like she wants to be in control of something and wants to have this kind of power and this notoriety. And suddenly she's going to be seen as like a leader figure within this thing. Um, and so it's it's kind of interesting because we just read Will of the Many, where a lot of those maneuverings they weren't so much about what's right or wrong. It was mostly people who were like. I want power, greed, like yeah. I want notoriety, um, yeah, and greed. And so I, I thought, I thought this kind of blended really well with with that idea. And at that point in the story, didn't doesn't Light Song also have the other fifty percent? Didn't he get the All yes. Mother's commands? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was an interesting scene too, where he he goes to he goes to All Mother and kind of convinces her. Because doesn't he, if I remember correctly, he just gives her his commands, right? Yeah. He's like, he's like, here they are, and so then she like trusts him with hers, um, and that was a that was a cool moment. I feel I like wish it I'd... was more like it was more like he gave her his commands to be ridden with it, and then she like, you know, was like, listen, you 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 are like you've done this the whole time you've been here, like you're not. She said something that was kind of rude i guess and then as mm. kind of a spiteful thing gave him the commands just so he couldn't cower out of the situation oh yeah okay maybe so, i didn't catch that yeah i can't remember okay. exactly what was said but i definitely know that it was there was some of that going on yeah i feel like there's that's a theme that comes up a lot actually in sanderson's yeah. works is like people trying to shrug off responsibility yeah. and then yeah. people being like mm, no nope can't <laughs> yeah. do that sorry <laughs> you don't get to actually yeah yeah, yeah. i i thought I thought Light Song was a, a fantastic character. There was so yeah. many. Mo First of all, he was by far the most hilarious character. I I was laughing so much. People say that they don't like Sanderson's humor. I've never really had an issue with it. Um, and I think you don't like it. You don't like his humor. Um, I don't like his humor sometimes. I actually think his humor in Warbreaker works for me better than any other of mm -hmm. his humor. Like I quite like Nightblood. I quite like Light Song. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think this iteration of his humor works for me the best. Personally. But in general, not so much. In general, usually it doesn't work a ton for me. Yeah. You didn't like Mistborn Era Two humor. Nope. Oh, really? Nope, oh, not shoot. in the slightest. Wayne and me are not two people who will ever see um, even close to eye to eye. Um, 
the ending of book four, no emotional impact for me personally. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's so funny. Wow. Yeah, I I loved I loved Era Two humor. Um, but Light Song, he he is fantastic in this book. I you know like like you guys said, he's got this arc of trying to shrug off responsibility and there's a great quote if i can find it real quick yeah the quote is he's talking with his brother and he's i forget what the initial like sentence was before this but he was like what am i supposed to do like blah 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 and larimer is that his brother's name right that he calls I you're Scoot. asking me for a pronunciation yeah yeah no, I, I always i always <laughs> thought it was like miramar but or Liramar, something like that. That's his brother. Yeah, it definitely starts with an L. Yeah. But I, I can't remember. I, I have it written Larimar? down somewhere. Larimar, Larimar yeah. That's it. That's it. Um, That's it. And he says, he, you know, his brother says, do your best. And for Light Song, it says, he didn't know what his best was. Truth is, he had never bothered to find out. And this is kind of at the tipping point where he's going from this guy who like lays around all day and doesn't really take responsibility for anything to this point where he's like, maybe I do need to try. And a lot of that is also, um, you know, with, with his like visions and stuff that he's having, he's starting to feel the pressure of like, maybe I need to do something. And I loved his like second half of the book where he kind of comes full circle where he's like trying to help Siri in these small ways like mostly he's just like talking crap with her and kind of like you know she'd ask him a question and he'd give like a half answer and then right before she would leave he'd be like but actually and he'd give her like a little snippet of real information uh, and so I loved I loved all those moments and then of course at the end where you know because th the whole time he's trying to figure out why would I ever give my breath away to somebody? Like these people come to me every single day and they're asking for favors. And in order for me to help them, I have to die. Like, why would I do that? And the perfect opportunity arises where he's like, I need to give Susabron my breath to, to return him to a whole state. Um, so yeah, I, I thought it was a great character arc. Even yeah, I actually that, quite... Or, go ahead. You go ahead, Gabe. Okay, I was going to say, really quick, even before that, when he starts to challenge his... Because, you know, he's deified as one of these returned gods, right? And he is so fast to start to try and do things that are against the norm, as in, like, trying to figure out who he was before or trying to, like, unlock memories, you know, do certain things that are just against the grain of every other god to try and figure out who he was. So I feel like he was always just trying to, you know trying to lock it in. Yeah, and I yeah. feel like that was um, a really great emotional beat for me too because he's like, I must have been like an investigator, a detective in my previous yes. life. And then when you find out it's, the, it's his brother, which I think is an amazing moment, yeah. he's mm -hmm. like, no, you weren't. Like yeah. you weren't, like none of this, like, I don't know, that whole arc is great. And yep. um, I still remember the first time reading um, the book and recognizing that he was gonna give his breath to Sousa Braun, like, four paragraphs before it happened, you yeah. know? Like, oh, yeah. I love yep. how Sanderson's so good at that. Like, all the clues were there, and then, like, right, like, the page before it happened, I was like, oh, my gosh, he's going <laughs> to give his breath. Yes. And then yep. it happens. Like, yeah. you know, I didn't predict it. It was just like I saw it coming, and, yep. oh, that yep. made it so satisfying. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, the, this whole read-through, I was like, I vaguely remember Susabron getting his tongue back and there being this like triumphal that's kind where of that's moment. exactly where I was too. I was like yeah. I remember him, you know, I remember like the thing that I remember in my head was like uh you know, threads going wild basically, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was from him. Yeah. Yeah, I I was like I was like I I, I just can't remember how this happens or like what connects to it. Um and so then when um uh, when Light Song gives him his breath. And I was thinking, like, what what could even possibly repair this guy's tongue? Like, what, yeah. like, is there any part of this magic system that would do that? And I guess I assumed that since Susabron already has all these breaths, that, like, if anything could heal him, his own would. Yeah. Um, and so when then I was thinking, oh, does he animate 
like a piece of cloth to work as his tongue or something like is that how it's gonna go That's a and good then thought. when Song, I didn't think of that yeah I was like there's got to be some something this magic system can do that will that will help him in that way um and then for light song to be like you know my breath to yours and he gives him that I it's just a fantastic moment even this time I, I didn't see it coming and I'm like that was that was great I don't quite understand why light song's breath did that as opposed to the breath that the king gets every day or every week or whatever but I like so it's because a returned breath is different yeah. than a regular oh, okay. breath a return um, breath okay. is given and it kills the return that gives it but it also has properties from what i understand that can heal a sick baby or heal a wound or heal a tongue but they die oh, okay. they're gone after that yeah like light song died giving up that breath yeah it's, right. like, it's a different kind of breath <laughs> yeah whereas oh, okay. like the little girl that sesebron goes in to take his weekly breath from just gives him that one breath and she's fine right yeah. okay Okay, cool. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize there was a difference between the two. Be, besides what, uh, like Vasher says at the end, where it's like we have, is, is it Vasher or is it in like the glossary thing at the end, where it's like there's one mega breath that sustains a uh, returned, and then from there on out, they're like feeding it once a week. I didn't realize that there was. No, that was that was somebody talking about the God King, I think, because Siri was like thinking that he was going to die or something. Yeah. Yeah. But they're but then... all they're all the same thing. So like that, like the God King isn't any different than any of the other returned, right? No. Yeah. No. It's the same. He just has a lot of breath. Right. Yeah, that that was another that was another interesting thing. So did they ever explain why you know the the king holds all this breath? Why why get like a why keep getting a new king like why not just have the same king who is like immortal did well, they ever that's, explain that their their religion was when there was a baby child that was you know stillborn returned. but returned that was the new god king that's just from what i understand that was how their religion worked that's the way it was mm, okay and, and that's why yeah. siri was convinced that they'd be killed right yeah and not realizing that that's not what happened to the yes. old... And that's so when, was, yeah, that that's when the priest twist. was was telling her, like, no, he's not going to yeah. die. Like, he's yeah. just going to give this, you know, he's, he's he'll gonna be fine. Give you this will live, you'll live a whole life with him, but he just won't be what he is now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. I'm like, why is that information not more readily available, I guess? Like, why is that not a more, like, widely known thing? I feel like there was a lot of things that were kept secret from Siri that didn't need to be kept secret. And that's, I'm not saying that is like a negative thing. It's yeah. just an observation. I always interpreted it as like in religion, it's like, you know, I don't know. They were, I don't know if they viewed Siri as like a person. They yeah, no, Siri I mean, they like literally called her pawn. the vessel. Like it was the vessel. a pawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was just a tool to be used for sure. Why does she need to understand anything? Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Yep. Yeah. So Hoyd is the storyteller. Yeah, see, this is, I don't know what this means. I never caught this at all, so. So Hoyd is the guy that like narrated. His name was literally Tress. Hoyd in the book game. Yeah. <laughs> it literally said, here's the storyteller, Hoyd. It wasn't even like a. Is that like the very beginning or the end? It was, it's chapter 32. Uh, yeah, it's near the very end. Okay. Remember when um, yeah, that's Siri, probably, Siri probably is why sitting... I missed it. I don't think I listened to the whole kind of end part. You know, story ended and then the glossary started, I left. No, no, not that. No, no, it's not this that is, close it's to like the, the middle end. of the no, no, book. No, 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 it's right. Okay, so it's when right Siri, here. it's like, oh, it's oh actually like you mean the storyteller with like all the sand and the dirt and all yeah. that? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I missed that his name was Hoyd, but I did see that. Oh, okay, okay. But I was gonna say like usually he has like um what's it called an alias, but no, this is just like right straight up. Yeah, like in Elantris, I don't think it even mentioned his name until like the after. The, the the scene at the very very end well there's just uh, he has a bunch of aliases and i was just about to say them out loud but i'm not going to just in case <laughs> <laughs> yep but there are many yeah. i'll yeah. keep them to myself yeah like in... yeah this is hoyd light song said master storyteller <laughs> awesome <laughs> he was right there yeah i loved i've 
I've really enjoyed just finding him in each book now that I know more about him especially after Tress like obviously all of Tress is narrated by Hoyt and he's a character in the book um, and so it's it's fun to keep an eye out for him it's a bit like where's Waldo uh, in the Cosmere <laughs> so, where's Hoyt yeah I loved I loved that moment and he was so I don't know there's just a certain vibe that he has like when he's when he's doing his storyteller thing, I'm like, this seems so eccentric. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, yeah, it was like a display that, you know, was nowhere else in the book ever. Mm. Some fancy, crazy dirt magic stuff, you know, <laughs> sand yeah. magic. Almost like what I said before we started recording about how you guys should read White Sand. Maybe <laughs> meant something. Okay. <laughs> oh, does Fair that enough. have to do with White Sand? Fair enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because we know we we know from Tress that he has kind of collected a bunch of different like magic systems, which I think is really interesting. Honestly, that's um, like one of the easiest ways to tell who Hoyt is if you don't know all the monikers is like who's using a bunch of different types of magic. And I think mm -hmm. in this book, like it hasn't been confirmed, but I think he's using several types or at oh, least okay. displaying several types. Yeah. Um, of magic. Oh, okay. Just just during his storytelling? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Or at least thought... things that are representative, yeah. whether he's using them or not. Um, gotcha. I'll, okay. I'll give you a hint. At one yeah. point, he does sprinkle metal. <laughs> like, oh. Right? You have to think, like, a lot of the Cosmere stuff is very simplistic. And, like, if you see metal, that may be a call, like, to, yeah. to Allomancy. Gotcha. Right. Um, now, whether he was actually using Allomancy or not, I'd have to reread the the section to see how I felt about it. Yeah, but the sure. sand being used is for sure, for white sure sands. a call from white sand. And that's all I'll say, since you haven't okay. read it. Okay, awesome. Okay, yeah. awesome. cool. Yeah, I, uh, I'll i definitely have to go reread that chapter because I don't think I even, I was so focused on like, oh, it's Hoyd. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that see, I, I never caught that. I just <laughs> was like, There's always cool another story. secret. Like, this guy's so good at telling stories, you know? <laughs> I didn't know it was Hoyt. I had no idea. Yeah. So, from here, let's go into some of our favorite moments from the books. We can do this in any order. We don't have to follow the notes beat by beat. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Bookborn uh, to ask you, what were some of your favorite moments? Well, we already talked about a couple of them, because definitely Vivenna... Um, his first experience with Nightblood is one of my favorite moments. Um, and uh, when Lightson finds out um, that his priest has been his brother the entire time mm -hmm. yeah. is also one of my very favorite moments in the book. Um, more broadly, surprisingly, I find um, this to be my favorite Sanderson romance. Um, yes. I'm not super keen on a lot of his romances. I, it took me till the very end of Mistborn Era 1 to even be slightly on board with Ellen and yeah. Vin. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, okay. a lot of his pairings just really do nothing for me personally. Um, hmm. But, um, you know, it's funny because I actually, on record, I usually hate age gap romances of this nature. I usually hate them. Um, I think Siri and Susan Brown, for some reason, though, just like, I feel like their personalities just go really well together. And I feel like, he um he it's not the trope of being like the wise because he really isn't siri oh, kind of yeah. has the upper hand which is why i think it doesn't give me the ick factor yeah and i okay. just really feel like i don't know i believed their relationship so i really just yeah. liked watching them together yeah as a pairing. totally yeah i would say well uh, again probably a general favorite moment but is when siri kind of realizes that you know, Sister Brown is not this big scary god and mm -hmm. he's more of like kind of a child in a lot of ways. Somebody yeah. that's uneducated and has been deprived of, you know, anything social interaction. So that was I was kinda cool to, just for her to realize that and then also help him work past it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a good, you know, building block, I guess, for their relationship. But Oh, I also yeah. loved when Nightblood starts calling for Vivenna. I just really love yes. Nightblood and Vivenna. When he's like, yeah. Vivenna, Vivenna, where are you? <laughs> yeah. like, come get me. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I was going to say, too, is anytime that Nightblood gets tossed, you know, like oh. sheath, in his sheath to like, you know, to a group of enemies, and that's like, that's his way of dealing with them. It's like, let me just throw the sword. He'll take care of the yeah. rest. And I'm like, dude, that is so cool. 
Like somebody's gonna pick it up and somebody's gonna start swinging it. It's just how it works. Yeah. Yes. So did I did I understand this correctly that the sword it can tell who's evil or not and and like influence them to kill their friends. So Is the sword that... the sword was built like when it was made that you know the command or whatever was to destroy evil right. Mm. That was kind of that's I kind of a warned gen- my would you like to destroy evil shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a generic thing. So yeah, that's you know the test he does with Vivena that Vasher does with Vivena is. You know, when he tells her to grab the sword, it's him seeing if she is of evil heart, right? And she's not. Okay. That's why she gets sick and she doesn't want to be near the sword. But somebody that is evil, you know, sees the sword and can't help but pick it up, right? And then it right. gets in their head and, you know, let's kill. Let's destroy evil. They're evil. You know, chop right. them up. That's evil. I mean, chop that's, it up. that's a complicated thing is they made this sword with good intent and then yes. it went terribly wrong. Yeah. Because right. Because... You know, the sword can't, um, you know, the sword doesn't understand time. Yep. Like, that's the one thing you keep seeing in the book. Yeah. Like, he'll be like, where did she go? It was just there. And he's like, that was 500 years ago. Yeah. Like, right. before yeah. it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, and the whole destroy evil, it didn't really actually have a. Yeah, there's not, not a lot of direction there, you know? No. Right. It, Anything it, could it, be considered evil, really, from, you know. Right. And I it also know. steals life, obviously. Yep, um, that's that black yeah. smoke, right? That's one thing that I didn't catch on to very quick, but like it leaves black black wounds that are like necrotic and stuff, right? Is that mm-hmm. what that is? Yeah. Yeah, I am um, a rapo on some of that stuff. I got to be careful. You guys haven't read Oh, does it get explained later? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> He's like, I plead the fifth. <laughs> you you can tell us if it gets explained later. That's I mean, no, it's like, no, but I feel like after Stormlight, you get more into a lot of Cosmere stuff. And so... You start to see more of the connections. There's just yeah. more stuff there, but... Um, okay. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, hopping back to uh, Siri and the God King. Yes, I love this relationship so much. I thought it was so cool that it went from this very... Um, what's the word? Like, it seems not raunchy, but it, it seems very, like, explicit at first, mm-hmm. where she's yeah. going in there, like, completely, sure. completely nude and, like, bowing down before him. And your initial thoughts are, oh, this guy is, like, twisted. Like, he just yeah. likes to see her, like, in this really, like, humiliating state and all this stuff. But really, he has no idea what's going on. Like, he does not understand it at all. And she doesn't understand that he doesn't understand. And there's just... It's a miscommunication trope, but it's done so well. And I don't know. I had I had a ton of fun with their relationship. Like, as she's kind of getting to know him a little bit better, and they're like... It, it happens in inches like just the the first I forget what the first interaction was but it was just them like moving a little bit closer or like just these little tiny things where she's like oh maybe he's not that scary and then like one time she decides to talk to him and she's like well nothing happened when well, I, I yelled think, at him yeah and well and so she's she, scared to do it though because if I remember the yeah. scene correctly she like has an outburst and then her hair turns white and she's yeah, like yeah she's oh, no. terrified yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah and she's she, she's she waiting for, fed up with dirt. it you know it's been like yeah. seven days of her going in and kneeling for hours and then falling asleep on the floor and then he's right. gone in the morning right and so she goes in there and does the whole kneeling thing and just gets fed up and stands up and walks towards the bed and she's like what you know what's going on blah 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 yeah, uh, and then of course she freaks <laughs> out, white hair, yeah. all that so stuff. Yeah, great happens. because you know, I mean, it's so messed up that her dad sent her yeah. because yeah. he liked Vivenna more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah more. I agree. Like, that was so that's terrible. <laughs> but you know, I think Siri has this thought, if I'm not mistaken, where she's like, Vivenna would have failed. Yeah, like Vivenna's personality, how she was yes. trained, she mm. would have failed. Yep. Like because I am who I am, like it, we didn't fail, and like things would have yeah. been worse if the event had been worse. sent, which yeah. I think is also a very um, interesting. That's um, that's something I was wondering about throughout the book, because I'm like, would, because initially Siri says, uh, like one of the first like couple nights that she's doing that she's like Vivenna would have known what to do like this was probably all in her training and then later she realizes like oh maybe Vivenna wouldn't have been able to do this and as a reader throughout the book I'm like I wonder what would have happened if the roles 
were reversed. Like, would Vivenna rise to the occasion like she does in the slums and figure something out? Um, but then we wouldn't have got this very, like, awesome romance between these two people because it takes it takes Siri thinking out of the box and just yep. kind of being an out of the box kind of person and challenging. To, yeah. yeah, takes her challenging so, the God King to to get right. where he is. You know. Exactly. And Vivina would not have done that. I don't believe right. that she could have done that. Right, right. No, and, and it's interesting to think about, though, like what would have happened if Vivenna had gone? Yeah. You know, would she have talked to him? I think it would have ended very differently. I do think she would have been in some ways more equipped to maybe yeah. know what to do, but totally. it wouldn't have been in the way Siri did it. And ultimately, she wouldn't have connected with Sousa Braun and, and, you know, things right. would have maybe stayed the same to disastrous consequences. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I I just loved all the little moments. Like there's, um, I forget what the first one is, but there's like, like the first time that he like puts his arm around her, and then like in one of the later scenes, he's like laying his like head in her lap. I'm just like, I just eat all this up. Like I just <laughs> love all these cute little scenes. Um, it's sweet, is yeah, the thing. Yeah, it is know? sweet. It is yeah. really sweet. And it's so. And, and, he, and the the God King is so innocent too. Like mm -hmm. he's so, he just he's never had it before you know it's just very right. innocent love which is cool yeah and it's very it, just the whole relationship in general is such an interesting contrast like what the relationship actually ends up being compared to what we see at the beginning like the reader is thinking one way oh this is going to be some like really like twisted thing yeah and then it ends up just being like this really really pure yeah uh relationship i it was super cool i i really enjoyed those two and especially near the end where like he he like tells her that he loves her for the first time yep. and like she says it back and like when they're they're like incrementally incrementally getting more and more connected to where the the end of the book where they're like I don't know if I would call them like a power couple, like Vin and Ellen, but like they're <laughs> they're kind of like this. I don't know. I, well, I don't I mean, think they are because I think they're also just totally fine being like removed from it. Yeah, like right. Essentially, yeah. they like go off and they're like, "Cool, bye." Yeah. I don't think they either of them are really that sad about being no, done. No, <laughs> they're they're not craving power. Yeah, they just want to be right. together and be happy. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. But speaking of Vin and Ellen, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you don't like that relationship because I feel like I, like I feel it like I now. I'm just oh, okay. saying, I've I've come to accept like the third book helped me see it differently, and now that I've reread it, I am on board. I I like Vin and Ellen quite a bit. I'm yeah. just saying the first time I read Mistborn One, I was like, this yeah. is stupid. <laughs> I was not a fan. <laughs> That's funny because I think like the whole like ballroom scene where he's like, isn't she like trying to dance with him and he's like reading his book or whatever? Stupid. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I loved. I loved it. I loved it. Um, <laughs> but I think I, mean, I get maybe why Ellen would like Vin. She's pretty cool. But I was yeah. like, Ellen, you're such, a, <laughs> such a wet blanket. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's um, funny. But yeah. no, I love Ellen now. So that I'm just saying, I'm honoring my first read. Yeah, right, totally right, 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 right. Totally sure. Um, yeah, I think I think I initially loved them together. Book two had me super anxious because there was kind of like a weird love triangle. I hate that book so much. Um, and the third, the third book, <laughs> the third book. Um, I remember, I can't remember exactly why, but I remember being really frustrated with Ellen in the third book. Oh, really? Um, Ellen, the third book is what made me like Ellen. Yeah. Oh, okay. For some reason, just, I don't know. Yeah. It was more more on board with third book Ellen. Yeah. Um, so we, we kind of talked about it. I'll just make a quick, like, little note here. I thought it was, you know, we talked about the king sending his favorite daughter uh, to <laughs> this other country. And I thought it was so interesting. Like at the, it's like one of the first things that happens in the book, where, you know, we kind of see from his perspective a little bit. Like, oh, I gotta send Vivenna. Like, this is gonna help the war effort and stuff. And then it, when it comes to the moment when he's, when she's coming in the room, and he's got to make a decision, just that moment of, I can't do it. Like, and he has to have this really honest moment with himself like which daughter do i love more um 
and it was like it's so it's so tragic it's a crazy and so concept tough to think about man. yeah but yeah. I, I love like it's this very up. like yes. it's messed up on it's so many up. levels. Yeah. Like, yeah. He should have sent Vivenna because I it, no matter how much he loved she her, if you're gonna send a daughter, but to be like trained I'm, and trained and done. You I know, like that was you her less. mission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> I like this one more, so you have to go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like those are your kids, man. I mean, I know yeah. it's hard because I have two children and like the idea of having to pick between them is so mind blowing oh, to me. Like I yeah. never could. Like I, there's no. just no way. But like realistically, there are parents who vastly favor one over the other. So I don't think it's yeah. like unrealistic. It's just messed up. <laughs> yeah, it is messed up. Uh, and Gabe's kinda, the favorite. It, it's just sad too, man. No, I'm actually not. <laughs> I'm you don't think so? The no. <laughs> no. No. My parents love the shit out of me, but I'm definitely not the favorite. <laughs> Hopefully they have no uh, favorites. You're no, they weird. don't. I'm just kidding. Yeah, my parents are awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. What have we not talked about in the notes here? Uh, did Did you get to talk about your favorite moment, Gabe? Uh, did I put one on here, or did I say something? Because I think my favorite my favorite first moment was when Siri started to kind of realize that Cicerobron was not what she thought he was. That whole mm -hmm. thing was awesome. Uh, my second favorite is when Vivenna realizes that the mercenaries were not what they seemed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I was like, even this read through, I don't think I caught it last time, but I was like, I was fooled. I was tricked. Mm. So when that happened, I was like, what, what is yeah. going on? You know. So that was really surprising. Um, and then of course, light song when he gives uh, Cesar Brown his breath. Yeah, just all the big ones, man. I really yeah. liked. Nice. I, speaking of uh, Light Song, I have this great quote from him <laughs> where he's talking to uh, – God, who is who is he talking to? He's talking to someone that says, uh, my name is Gitterol, your grace. I was named after my father. <laughs> and Light Song says, after he what? Spent an unusual amount of time in the local tavern. <laughs> 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 That's his humor for you, though. He's like that the whole time. Uh, I love him a loose so cannon. much. <laughs> um, and then this was also a great, not, not like a funny moment, but this was a great moment with Vivenna when um, is so she's still with the mercenaries, and he's taking her, I think, to the slum lords, and she says something like. Uh, you know she's seeing the slums for the first time and she's seeing all these like you know rugged people in like alleyways and prostitutes on doorsteps and stuff and she's like my people are down here they're living down here with prostitutes and gangs and she's outraged yeah and uh uh denth he's like your people are the prostitutes yeah. and gangs like like that's your people came over here and they became this like that's like they're not they're not like in danger from these people they are these people and it was just this but earth it's, but it's shattering like a, moment but it's like a it's an earth shattering moment for her but also they're it's probably happened because they are reviled anyway yeah for sure totally so Definitely. it's like both it's both yeah. moments that i think is hard for vivenna yeah. yeah i i think that it, the difference being that in her head her people would never like stoop this totally. low. Like her, yeah. her people would never. She's on a high this. horse. That's like yeah. the yeah. worst thing about Vivenna. Everything's yep. a high yeah. horse to her. Yeah. But she she's also, better than everyone. She also does come to understand, right after her week of homelessness or two weeks. Yeah. It was two weeks of homelessness, and all that other stuff. She starts to kind of realize, like, okay, you know, she I've sees been a the light of the situation. This entire time. Yeah, I've been, I've been hardship. high and mighty the whole time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that that was that was such an interesting period of time where she's having to learn. She's like going from alleyway to alleyway because she can't sleep in the same one every night. And like that, the yeah, that whole scene of homelessness. The thing that stuck out to me is when the the guy she had met before, like Caesar. Oh shit, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what Just happened? So, so. um, <laughs> This guy that she has seen before, right? She's in an alley and she's at this point, you know, alone. She just escaped from uh, Basher, I think. Uh, and he's like, you know, listen, you know, your clothes are worth a lot. Take off your skirt, you know? Oh, the guy and, in the alley that yeah, was like trying to he, take her stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And she, you know, she gives him the skirt, right? And then 
and then he's like take off your shift or whatever else and and at that point she's like she snaps she's like no she grabs mud and you know rubs it all right. of herself and her hair and she's like if you want it it's dirty you can't have it right and i was like that's that's the moment i feel like where she broke and finally kind of understood like holy crap this is yeah this is you know bad like really right. bad yeah that that was a great moment where she's just like you know what like if if you're gonna try and take it from me, I'm gonna make it so that yeah, you don't I, want it. Yeah, exactly. You you don't want it, um, right? You but it was a me moment. Of another favorite Vivenna moment, actually. Yeah. Which is before the change, I'm pretty sure. Before I think the other thing is that she only ever saw anything from her worldview. Totally. One right. of my favorite moments is when she catches it, catches a glimpse of Siri, and is like, "Oh my gosh, poor Siri! Look at how they forced her to yeah. change her hair to match yeah. the dress, and <laughs> yeah. she must be so miserable." And we had already seen the scene of Siri being like, "I can match my hair to yeah. the dress." <laughs> yeah. 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 She's like totally like loving it. Yep. And yeah. um, I always loved that moment because it's like once again Vivenna like only sees through this like very narrow yes. and, yeah. and that right. moment where she's like putting the mud on the dress and all this stuff is like finally her right. having to like view through something other than yeah. her like very narrow yep. Yep. worldview and the same thing with like the breaths and her religion and she yep. has all these yeah. breaths and like yep. um, how she has to deal with that is super interesting yeah well like like when she's talking with uh, with Jules and she's like mm -hmm you know, Jewel said something to her and she's like, puts her hand on her shoulder. She's like, I just want you to know that I understand. And Jewel's like, what do you mean you understand? And she's like, they, they did something horrible to you. They took your breath from you and all this stuff. And Jules laughs at her and she's like, no, you don't understand. Like I did this willingly. Like I am a part of my God King because I gave him my. It breath. was an like, honor. Yeah, yeah, it was this yeah. huge honor. And Vivenna's like, she was not expecting that. She's no. like, what? Yeah. Like what the heck? Yeah. Um, and that that was another another great moment where, um, you just kind of see, you see like how Vivenna thinks about most things. I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, another great light song quote to Siri is <laughs> we're gods well I am you're close enough a god in law <laughs> 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 I laughed so hard at that one uh, he's such he's such an awesome character um, okay question for Bookborn Siri asks Hoyd, I should have brought this up earlier, but Siri mm. asks Hoyd, where did you learn your form of storytelling? Mm. And he said, I learned it many years ago from a man who didn't know who he was, a place where two lands meet and gods have died. Do we know what this is? We have theories. Okay. But I don't think we know, unless something new happened. The last time I looked into this, it's like we have theories. Mm. Okay. Um. Because gods died in Mistborn. I, we don't think one. that's what it's referencing. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, read Stormlight first before. Yeah, she's like, she's trying to think about <laughs> how much she like, can affect us right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think about like where I learned some of this information. Yeah, sure. And a lot of, I'll say this because you guys already know about shards and stuff. Yeah. A lot of, or a lot of information about wider shard stuff does happen in Stormlight. Not necessarily about this in particular, but I, I'd hesitate to say anything more about shard stuff until you have read those, because I think it helps the understanding grow gotcha. a lot about Fair what's enough. happening. Fair enough. Okay. So cool. that's all um, about that. But yeah. no, we don't. We don't really know. We we have guesses about what he's talking about. Gotcha. Okay. Um, a cool little thing of uh, world building. I thought it was interesting that the uh, kind of the the separation, the the religious separation of Halandrin to Idris, was that they give they gave up the Idrian like invisible, uncaring god for this physical represent like this physical hero the, that yeah. saved them in a time of need and then they kind of went to worship him and worship people like him the returned etc um and so i thought it was just kind of i was kind of interesting i'm like man that's like directly from the old testament of the bible <laughs> <laughs> i'm like that's so yeah. that's so on point um 
But yeah, I thought because the whole time I was like, I was like, where did this separation take place? But from from that little nugget that we get, I have to imagine that that the Halandrins like they separated from Idris and they were just like, they're like, I'm fed up with this system of religion that you guys are are working with over here, and just kind of went to go find their own thing. Is yeah, that? But then. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree too, but there also is a magic that's happening in Halidrin, right? Like, the, the return, that is magic. They were dead. They were yeah. brought back to life. And so, so part that's... Of... Go okay, ahead. go ahead, sorry. No, you got it. So, I was going to ask, so is that... I I don't think I was expecting the returned to actually be a real thing. I thought it was going to be someone... The making make... something up or the... Right. Yeah. 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 And so I, or, or just like a person who like had their memory wiped through magic or something and they yeah. like parade them as these returned, but they're actually real. Like these, yep. like these returned actually came back from the dead. And so I'm kind of like, where does this, like, do we know the mechanics of this? Like, do we know how somebody comes back as a return? Like, you know, it says like dying in like a bold way or like a brave way, yeah. but I I just expected the priests to be lying about that. So I I don't know. The way that it was said to the you know, in total was a, a returned was brought back to life for a single purpose, right? To mm. give life to somebody or heal somebody or do something, one thing yeah, that they could is, do. Is Spencer they asking mechanically in the Cosmere why it happens? I, I guess I guess both I guess what I'm just wondering is like it it seems like the priests weren't lying about these people coming back from the dead for a specific purpose like Gabe is saying so do we like do we know why that happens like I mean, with, do we with know the for color? sure it is a specific purpose or is that what the religion has put on it no I guess yeah, that's, that's what definitely I'm what the religion has said so we don't know for sure um, okay I don't know. I'm trying to think. It's been a while since I Be read a bunch of stuff about. It. I'm trying to think if I know. I think it has to maybe do with the shard. Mm. So isn't isn't the shard on Nalthus endowment? Endowment. Okay. Hold on. Let me yeah. now the yeah, shard. Yeah, I don't know if we'd know that. <laughs> oh, I was right. It is endowment. Okay, okay. I do have it up in my head. So, so what I think is it might endowment? Have something to do with endowment. I don't think that's ever said in Warbreaker. But that's not like a spoiler for anything. We just yeah, at some point have known what stuff. the yeah. shards yeah. are. So I think if I recall, this is like not, I can't quite remember. I think it has something to do with endowment and how that shard runs, why there are returned. That's my okay. memory, I think, of having read that. But do we know like what endowment does or like what it, like why, why it Well, would endowment's do that? just the shard, just kind of like how ruin and preservation were on. Um, right. Mistborn, but are uh, on um, Skadrial, but right ruin and um, preservation were held by people, right? Right. And now they're held by Harmony, and so that's right. been like a whole thing. So there's like a a vessel to to endowment as well. Okay. So I, I just pulled something up here that. Don't don't pull stuff up, Gabe. You will spoil yourself. I did. Yourself. You I did. Pull stuff up, Gabe. But it, but it's not, nothing different from what you're okay. saying, though. Okay. Okay, but what I'm saying is, are you pulling it up on the copper mind? Because turn turn it off right now. X out of the <laughs> copper mind right now, Gabe. <laughs> you have not read Stormlight Archive. You are not allowed on the copper mind. I'm not on the copper mind. I don't think. I just googled it. Okay, then you're probably on the copper mind. <laughs> Where else would you be? If you're I don't know. It just popped up. Element. Don't, All right, I'm, I'm getting rid of it. It's gone. It's abort, gone. Abort mission. It's gone. Mission aborted. <laughs> don't, don't Google anything until mission you've read the Stormlight Archive. Mission aborted. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess I guess my question is like, you know, saying like preservation and ruin, we can get a good idea of like what those do, but endowment, like, is that does that that's, specifically that's have to the rub, huh? Look, we'll talk after Stormlight. I don't want to okay. say anything else. Yeah. <laughs> like, just read the book, dude. Done. Read the book. Gosh, we dang brought it. you on here to talk about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, before. but I didn't like you haven't read Stormlight. Like so much. She's not here to forfeit her knowledge of that stuff, dude. You I'm gotta, not. I'm not here to spoil it. your yeah reading. enjoyment. <laughs> Okay, well, as long as, like, if, if Stormlight specifically tells us, I just didn't think that... I no, thought it I would just, have its own shards and tell us The relationships those. between, like, Vessel and Shard, I think, are just a lot clearer. 
Um, okay. In from like you definitely get a lot of it. I feel like in um, era two of Mistborn because Harmony is such a presence. I think right. you got more of it, but I I think we. I don't know. I just I get really. Anyway, I don't know a lot about endowment. I don't think we know a lot about endowment. So sure. the answer is I don't think we know a lot. Mm, okay. Um, currently, fair. I guess is the bigger answer. Okay. Um, so later on, we see that uh, Vivenna and Siri, or it's really just like a quick sentence that mentions this. Are they descended from a returned? Yeah, that's that's what Vasher says. He's like, because Vasher changes his form, and he right. says, well. You can change your hair. That's because you're descended. You're, you have the blood of. Say, isn't that you have the blood the of a thing? returned? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, but I was just like, I thought the returned couldn't have kids and stuff. Like it was like. I guess that's true. They the priests do say that the god king is infertile. So, that's right. A good point. But Vasher does say that, and he says, you "Wait, are, but you how can the... the god king be infertile if they want Siri to get pregnant?" Well, because it was all a ruse. Yeah, I they thought it was just like... kind of a. Right, but if it was a ruse, then they never had to put her in there. Well, I think I think it was a ruse for the people because they they already had a child that had been, uh, you know. Well, I know that. Yeah, I know that they weren't going to actually use her child. But if they, how was she going to get pregnant? They well, wanted to they, parade her. Think... They wanted to parade her around looking pregnant. Hmm. Or they wanted right? they wanted the idea of her well, to no. be out there that was pregnant. Cause there's yeah, because when because when she's supposed to be pregnant, they're like, we're keeping you inside. Yeah, now. and we're gonna show everybody. That was gonna be the thing. They could have just said that she was with the God King the whole time and never actually put her in there. Yeah, that's where it breaks down a little bit. I think, like, I don't uh, remember that. Are you sure? Are I you am, sure? I am positive yeah. that Vasher says that. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. Google it. Do your research. I know he says it. Was, it. Yeah, I, it was I, in. I mean, it was in one of the. You, yeah, he, but... it's the last of the thing. He changes form into this big thing, and he's talking to the God King. He's like, "I'm like you, you know. I'm giving you this army because I was the one before you, or whatever." And then Siri's like, "You can change your form," and he's like, "You can change your hair. You're, that's because you are the blood of a returned." Yeah. Okay, the returns could reproduce under some peculiar circumstances. The priests just don't know the method. Mm. Oh. This is implied because that there are like some god kings ago. are because it says some god kings are indeed the sons of previous ones. Oh, because okay. the first god king only died after a male heir was produced because the first one was female. Huh. But other returned are infertile. Oh, okay, interesting. So I wonder if Vasher must. Uh, yeah, that's it's a lot to unpack. <laughs> huh. Okay, the God King cannot reproduce, but as the original King, who is the start of the original royal line, could there must be a way, but they're unsure of how to do it. Oh, okay, so they're descended from the first one, like the very, like the, the very beginning. first ones. Yeah. Hmm. I but don't then, know. But then that makes me think, like, is Vasher also, you know, part of that first? Or well, something. it says the I annotations. Oh, yeah, the annotations of Warbreaker confirm that Susabron was the actual child of the God King before him. Okay. Oh. So the priests know of how to have them reproduce and try to do so because they prefer to actually have the child. Oh. But if an oh. infant return appears, they take that as a sign that it's time for a new God King and have That's, a succession. That's okay. That makes Interesting. sense. Because they also okay. say that as well. I'm gonna say like because otherwise it would make no sense to put Siri in there. Yeah. yeah. They knew the whole I, time. So they can reproduce. It's just not always gonna happen. Yeah. I, I just assumed that it was a ruse for all the like servants and stuff that have to like listen in and all that stuff. Like the whole thing was just like a big ruse. That that's what I got well, from but, the end but of it. We learned at the like, end that like the most the priests were like honest to their faith and values and Bluefingers was the one that was trying to mess everything up, right? Yeah, so the priest listening in weren't No, yeah. Didn't need a ruse. They thought they, they thought what they were doing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it was it was Trelides and his whole cadre but, of people but, at the end that like stop her from going outside to light song. They're like, nope, we have an infant, we have an infant. We're gonna like not parade. We're not gonna yeah, like, let but, you out. Yes, you're right about that. But that's because they found an infant, right? Right. And so they took it as a sign. Yes. That they needed but a new session. They but they found that infant. They were. They, they were gonna kill Siri. Yeah, because they were trying to honestly get Siri's you know, their child together. Right. That was gonna be yeah. the God King, mm. but then they found a baby that was stillborn and 
returned and that was their sign to say okay this is the god king as it always has been in the past hmm okay interesting yeah yeah this book i wish you know we we get so many sanderson books where the magic is eventually explicitly stated um you know oh i mean i guess i don't know so much about stormlight but the other like mistborn like eventually you understand all of the rules of that magic system and there's nothing that's really hidden from you besides maybe like the high level like harmonies but even that is like pretty well explained um and so i guess i was a little frustrated might be too strong of a word but like with warbreaker i liked the magic system i just don't think that i truly understand the mechanics of it and maybe that's coming later um in like the next warbreaker book whenever that is but i felt like i don't know i just felt like i didn't quite i didn't quite get a lot of it yeah i feel like or the magic like the, system the fine details yeah the magic if if you're thinking along the lines of the magic system as part of that whole priest thing with the god king and whatever yeah that would be confusing but if like uh, for me like i saw you know breaths and the way that the biochroma works that was fairly defined i understood what was going on mm. how it worked how it was moved around maybe except for a couple things but like i think yeah. i think, I think the, if you reread it it might click more i think warbreaker is really hard to get the first time yeah and then when you reread it again it can be Cause, yeah. Because even at the end, like, the whole book, it's, like, talking about how, like, you can only give your breaths away in one go, and you can't, like, parse it out. And then at the end, they're like, oh, maybe Denth just didn't know what he was talking about or whatever. Or Vienna, uh, Vivenna, was, like, uh, she saw Vasher do something, and she was like, oh, maybe you can do it, like, one at a time or something. Well, that's, that's like, when, the, you know, when... Siri is talking to whoever about the God King and they're explaining to her that no, he's not gonna die when he gives the wealth of right. breath that he has because it's separate, right? So that would oh, that would be okay. him giving I see. this right. thing of breaths, except you know, except for the ones that he has personally. Um, right. and it His was innate. it was super okay. vague. Like I, I agree with you. It was it was hard to catch, but they do talk about okay. it a couple times where you can separate it and i know vasher also has some higher commands that nobody else really knows and he talks about that as well where he can do certain things and give certain breaths this and that right okay so let, let's let's jump into our our final thoughts here any any final thoughts on the ending or any other like um bookborn if you want to do any like cosmere connections that we may not have caught at this point in the episode um anything like that is there anything you want to talk about read white sand read <laughs> from archive um yeah she's like you need more information before we can talk about this stuff all right mm. um i guess i guess i'll give you something to look forward to um yeah. lots of lots of warbreaker stuff in stormlight if you're prepared to uh, see it oh so, is there okay i thought um, there was like one people well, like, told me there was like one reference Kings, don't go into way kings being like where is it yeah but i'm just right, being yeah. like there will be stuff that you will not miss. <laughs> okay. So um, it is fun to read Warbreaker before Stormlight. You don't need to, but it is a fun, awesome, fun one to read beforehand. So um, okay. I don't know. As, as in terms of other Cosmere stuff, um, most of the connections we would talk about are Stormlight related. To be Got honest, it. Yeah. that's okay. That's it. The we conversation. Just, we just said, need to read it. That's it. Do we? Do, read do it. we read see? It read it. Read it already. <laughs> exactly. Did, <laughs> read it did already. We, did we see anyone from Warbreaker in Era 2 of Mistborn? Like, at the end there, where all those, like, Kelsier and all his companions, like, did mm -hmm. we see anybody from Warbreaker? Are you, well, I don't want to give away, because someone you saw, you don't know who it is, because you haven't read the book that they're from. That's the person I remember the most. Yeah. So I'm trying to think... Is where I really feel I mean, like we need to like, was... we talk about this stuff. We need to read all of it. Like we just need to well, have. Well, I no, because mean, because um... there was there was a guy so... from Elantris. The little orb thing was from Elantris. In in that was the, the only two. thing from Elantris. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and then there was a character that had the, and then there was the. I know that one of the characters is maybe not from Emperor's Soul, but is using okay. the same magic. That's the one I was thinking you had missed. Yes. Okay. Shy is from Emperor's Soul. That is, okay. she is the character in Emperor's Soul. Um, and then there's the guy that you don't, we haven't met. We just know where he's from because he can use Aether. 
Right. And then, okay. Um, who am I forgetting? Who else is there? Those are the two I remember the most. Okay. Uh, I just didn't I don't know think if anyone anybody. from Warbreaker is is in that crew. Um, but I I've only read uh, Lost Metal once when it came out. Same. In yeah. November of last year, or a year and a half okay. ago. So that part is a little fuzzy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, Gabe, any final thoughts? Like anything on the ending, like the very end, or anything you want to say about this book? I'm just excited for the next one. I know that'll be a long time, but I'm excited for it. Me the too. next Warbreaker specifically. Yeah, specifically. Okay. Let's not hold our breath, but me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it's going to be a very long time. Shit, I'll be 40 by the time it comes out. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I think for me, uh, you know, I kind of said it all at the top of the show. For me, this book was uh, good, not probably not fantastic, not one of my favorites, but um, I did enjoy it. And I would encourage if anybody hasn't listened to the graphic audio edition, I would highly recommend that because there's music and sound effects and all sorts of cool stuff and a fully voiced cast. Um, also, did you guys know that Harry Potter is getting a fully voiced cast or fully casted audiobook? book? Uh, where it's going to be like different people playing each character. I'm super excited for that. But yeah, I would say this book was was good. I, I, I it's, Like I said, it's not my favorite, but I did enjoy the ending. I love the reveal of uh, Vasher having like this army and being kind of this ancient guy and being part of like this group of other ancient uh, returned and stuff. Um, it reminded me a lot of Night Angel, if anybody's read that. Um, so that was uh, that was a Brent good Weeks. time. Brent Weeks, yeah. So yeah, anyway, those are those are kind of my my final thoughts on uh, on this book. I, I had a good time with it. Sweet. So <laughs> Gabe is having some camera <laughs> yeah. troubles. Yeah, it's it's uh, just just wrap up, dude. I'm here still. Okay. Just wrap up. Okay. End it. Okay. Um, all right, Bookborn, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry Thanks to keep you me. so late, but I had a great time chatting no with problem. you. No yep, so. Thank you. We'll have to get you on for a Harry Potter episode sometime, if you're free. I, Absolutely. I don't know what you're... I can always talk about Harry Potter. Cool. All right, well, that is going to wrap us up there, everyone. Remember to go subscribe to Bookborn if you haven't already. The link to her channel will, of course, be down in the description as well as the links to our Twitter, Discord, and Patreon where you can see episodes early and see exclusive content that no one else gets to. Uh, lastly, be sure to check out the bingo card and please let me know in the comments if you're having trouble with it or if it's not working or something so that I can do some troubleshooting if I need to. Uh, also, on the horizon is a couple creators corner episodes uh they're back we're doing them again it's been probably like six months since our last creators corner episode so we have steven from the fantology podcast and the next week after that we have adrian gibson from fanfi addict and i'm sure he'll also be talking about his recently self-published book as well mushroom blues and then right after that, we'll also have a late night drunk episode where we talk about Fourth Wing with our friend Sam, uh, who recently joined us for our Will of the Many episode. And we're probably all going to rip that book to shreds while we drink wine and have a fantastic time. So you don't want to miss that one. That's going to be a ton of fun. Um, and then sometime not in may but probably in june we'll probably go into way of kings the first stormlight book so we're really trying to get back into the cosmere here really looking forward to it so i hope you guys will enjoy that upcoming content but with all that thank you so much for watching until next time keep an eye on those squirrels out there you never know who's controlling them